All right, guys, let's get into it today. It's going to be a good one. We're going to break down render. I think you don't want to miss it. It's got some very interesting points that could set you up in this bull run. My name is Paul Barrow. Welcome back into Tech Path. I do want to thank our sponsor today, and that is Tangem. This is the place to start and get your self-custody journey underway. And listen, guys, this is one thing that is probably one of the most important things to do, and that is to get ready to be able to offload from exchanges. If you're going to hold tokens, even if you're going to go into USDC or other stable coins out there, get a self-custody wallet. Tangem is the way to go. Use our code down below. Very easy to set up, super secure. Go ahead and start getting that stuff in place right now with your self-custody plan to get started. Let's go over to the topic today, and that is Render. Render, of course, has been doing some things in the background, as you guys know. Otoy and Octane already on, uh, on play right now. Maxon getting ready to go with Redshift. And then, of course, their newest uh, cycle of innovation coming into one of the most advanced 3D tools out there with Blender. So I want to go to a clip real quick, and this is in reference to Lightfield Labs. In case you don't know, Render purchased them a while back, and they were trying to achieve something that was very unique. Take a look at this clip, and you'll get an idea. That These are all great techniques, great technologies for what they are, but they're not forming an actual object. Let's now compare that to a stereoscopic display. You're getting the warpage that occurs from different keystones because it is an illusion that your left eye, right eye have to put together in the brain with stereopsis. So let's now jump to comparing that to a multiplanar volumetric display. You won't actually see something occlude something else. You'll also see things that kind of get uh, somewhat blown out, or you'll see the the black halos around objects as you're moving around. Now we're going to compare this to a perfect wavefront display. You are actually creating the exact object with the reflections, the refractions, focusing accurately. The butterflies here you see going out of focus as the eye is moving in and out of focus, depending on where you, the viewer, would be selecting. That is now indistinguishable from the real thing. And when you put all of these things together, you then have two and a half billion pixels that are modulating in full real time. One of our ultimate goals and dreams is to build the true holodeck. So going from this fish scene now to large environments, things where you can project holographic dolphins, for example, 10 billion pixels per square meter. All right. So one of the things he hit, of course, is the holodeck. This is one of the things they released at this event that they just did last week. That's Jules Arbach, who is the founder of Render at the tech forum and they were talking about this very issue and these are the kind of advancements that render has been able to do and i want you to think about this because if you look at where nvidia has come from you look at the kind of technology that we've seen develop over time especially around gpus and the processing power of cloud rendering capabilities that's where render is heading this next clip will get into jules erbach talking about the holodeck now this is a very important clip so take a look and uh, Bill Gates is an investor. Uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of excitement around this, this kind of technology. Google's working on something similar, but nowhere near the fidelity of what Life in Lab is doing. Close with a video showing how it all works. That's what we'll be doing. This is a room, by the way, with, with the uh, light field panels and uh, touch sensing all integrated. So this is going to be in theme parks and uh, concerts and things like that first. Um, the panels for this will be shipping in uh, next year. By the end of this decade, you'll start to see 100-inch holographic TVs and panels and the like. And eventually, we see these things being something that replaces your garage or your, your living room area with, with a window into anything, right? And as the cost of these panels goes down to the cost of an OLED or even cheaper, um, I think that's what we're going to be experiencing. And uh, we have investors in our parent company, Otoy, including Warner Brothers, Disney, and others. All right, so you can kind of see the holodeck theme, of course, can come from Star Trek lore. And the reality is that this is here now. They're going to theme parks first, yeah, we'll see that. But I think we're going to see this in productivity. You could see this in all sorts of industries. This is a big deal. If you go back to one of Render's blog posts, this is on Medium. This was in December of 2020, okay? And I want you to go back and look at their advisors. So there's J.J. Abrams. There's Ari Emanuel. J. 
Jennifer Zeus Scott. There's some pretty heavy hitters here. And why is that important? Well, this next clip, we'll get into a little bit of some of these advisors and what they think the future really means for render. Here's Ari Emanuel. Take a look. Yeah. But I'll just say, when I saw his technology, I realized where uh, production could go. And so I've just been along for the ride. He's on the verge of some really incredible stuff right now. All right. So Ari Amano, in case you don't know, UFC, essentially one of the key owners of UFC and the likelihood of entertainment, especially when you look at what's happening in the performance sport world. And you look at this post, this was a blog post back in 2017 by Ari Emanuel. And if you look at some of the things he was talking about within this, one of the things it's all going to be built on render. We have lined up sig and signed deals with all of the major media companies, including Disney, HBO, Facebook, Unity. Light stages will be built at our WME offices for blockchain-based scans of all of our clients and athletes. So this is now becoming reality. Now, I know that it's taken some time, but what we are now starting to see is the reality of cloud-based compute that may be outpacing that that we know today in terms of things like AWS, you know, and Azure, all of the big ones that are out there in terms of the capability of where our current technologies are today. So you guys got to get ready for something that is really going to change going forward. Uh, Jennifer Zhu Scott, this is her, of course, World Economic Forum, also a council member of the Future Blockchain Chain Council. And these are the kind of people that I think understand the vision of what Jules Zerbach is trying to achieve. All right, so this next clip, we'll get into a little bit of the understanding of why Render could get adopted much quicker. And one of the key reasons here is AI. And I think most people, when they're investing today in crypto, they probably don't understand what most of it is. But you ask them, most sharp investors, if you ask them about NVIDIA, they completely understand the business model where it's going. Well, that's exactly where this could go. Here is Jennifer talking about the value of what this means. Take a look. I took a huge risk and bought some Bitcoin at $100. And um, when you went to 3000 I thought, oh my God, I made so much money. <laughs> this is my third full cycle. 2016, uh, we were selected by WEF as uh, you know, two of the 16 people in the future of blockchain council at that time. The difference then was that a lot of those uh, earlier crypto bros, they created the, just completely from tech point of view and make no sense to the real world. Mm -hmm. But this time around, I actually think it's quite different. What, what implications is that going to have for these GPU companies, whether it's their share price and this whole race? If you take a look at the uh, what's happening in the global um, tech scene, right? Localized AI, local agent is going to happen. A couple of trends need to notice here. Uh, as we have already well addressed in that in China, GPU is becoming a resource that's very difficult to access. Yeah. They, they, they will have the capability to hold their own data locally, process locally. Of course, there's a trade-off in terms of efficiency and performance, but eventually I think those kind of alternative as opposed to very centralized approach like open AI will start to flourish. It will become much more popular outside of the U.S. system. Combined with regulation uh, is probably the, the recipe, the best recipe you can have right now. So what she's getting at here is decentralized compute versus centralized compute. And if you look at the models that industry has taken around cloud computing in general, well, that's been some of the biggest performers out there, including things like Amazon, AWS, and Google's Azure. So where does this go? Well, this next clip will outline why this could be the biggest play you've made in crypto just yet. Take a look. So the reason why I built Render initially was we were doing CGI renders on AWS. And at that time, we knew that uh, GPUs were going on AWS. That was, didn't exist before then, really. Uh, we even helped uh, AWS design the G2 instance, which was the very first um, data center GPU. Those cards weren't any better than what you could buy at Best Buy, but they were 10 times more expensive. And NVIDIA had a EULA right, that says you can't use a you know, GeForce card in a, in a server. And that meant that Amazon and Azure, when they followed, and, and, and Google Compute always had to pay more, even just for a traditional you know, cloud gaming card. And that's where Render was born. When you move towards AI, really the big things are, are memory and, and the ability to pull things together, which is important for training, not so much for inference. Another interesting vendor is Apple. I mean, if we imagine a decentralized future that can leverage iPhones and iPads and even Macs, which have 
frankly, a ton of memory, and Apple's committed to making as much AI as possible work locally. That's their selling point for future iPhones, and they're taking that very same hardware now and putting it for the first time on the, on the cloud. That could be amazing for the future of what we're all looking for. So when you take in all that into consideration, render with a decentralized compute model is essentially going to take over all of this because it's going to be easier, cheaper, and more efficient when it comes to being able to do a lot of these advanced compute projects. So a lot happening here for sure. Look at the size of the market as it is right now. You look at crypto kind of hovering in between number four and five right there between alpha. This is in terms of overall market cap around 272 right now, trillion. If this absolutely continues to climb and we see render as a big part of this, look at where Nvidia sets at 3.6 trillion right now, Apple at around 3.4 trillion. And remember, cloud compute lives in those top three, really the top five, Apple, Google, Microsoft, and Nvidia. All of this starting to tie in. Render could be one of the biggest, biggest wins out there overall. I wanna to go to this next clip because this is Jensen Huang from NVIDIA, and he talks about where Render could be going. Take a look. 200 to 300,000 GPU clusters are, are, are here. How long can you sustain what you're doing today? And does the demand for your products depend on it scaling to millions? That part, the last part is no. Um, my sense is that uh, distributed training will have to work. Right. And uh, my sense is that that uh, distributed computing will be invented. Right. And and some form of federated learning and, and distributed, com you know, um, asynchronous distributed computing uh, is going to is going to um, uh, be discovered. And I'm very, en very enthusiastic and very optimistic about that. Uh, do we think that we need millions of GPUs? No doubt. Yeah. Yeah, that is that is a for certainty now. Yeah. It's about, it's about to go up by a billion times. Right, by yeah, by, by, the, by a million thing. X by a that's by right. a billion X. That's right. Like, that's the part that most people have you know haven't completely internalized. This is that industry we were talking about, but right. this is the industrial revolution. Right. Now, what Jensen is talking about there is a huge statement. Because he's talking about for us to grow at the pace in which we would need to to perform AI at the scale in which he think it's going he thinks it's going to go. And I would say that Nvidia is the world's expert on where this potentially can go. Decentralized compute is going to be the number one area. Federated learning, that kind of uh, capacity, which is what he's talking about with AI, that is where Render falls smack dab in the middle. So a big deal going into where Render. So just take a look at Render versus Bitcoin and the trend line that we're starting to see. These are these big swooping up signals that we're looking at right now. And it's still not completely out there into where people are truly understanding what Render's capacity could be. If you look at the trend line on the forecast between now and say, you know, the next two to three years, these are the kind of upward trends that we're talking about with Render. And if you look at consideration of comparison of where the market cap could go if it was at the value of just Bitcoin. You know, this is what you'd see right there, almost a 700x uh, return. Not saying that's going to happen, but I'm getting at is you're looking at the technology that most likely will catapult mankind to the next level, being AI. And if you're going to have companies that are going to be involved in that, well, you've got NVIDIA, a handful of the top five tech companies, and then who are the outliers? Render being one of them. So this could be a huge opportunity. Look at the market cap right now sitting at 3.3 billion. Volume 1.7, 1.17 billion right now, just in the last 24 hours, up 116%. Look at the volume of the market cap overall in 24 hours. These kind of moves right here are significant. Most of the time, this is just easy with a 5% of this is still pretty impressive. The uh, Also, look at the, just look at the general tokenomics here. Very, very effective in terms of uh, fully diluted tokenomics. So again, very positive things. Remember that Solana is one fourth of where Ethereum is. And if you look at Solana just continuing to climb, well, the likelihood, let me kind of zoom in on that for you right there. 103 versus 400. And if it continues, well, it's going to continue to climb. So I think obviously Render just wins because of that. So a lot happening out there, guys. Uh, take a look at the current chart right now over just since the beginning of November, render is up, what are we at? Right here, almost 53%. Uh, so 
Not a bad move, but remember, this is way off of where its all-time high was quite some time ago. So take a look at the markets. Uh, I think this is going to get to be one that we have to keep a very close eye on. All right, if you guys are not part of the Diamond Circle, make sure and get in right now. It's a great place to get additional content. If you want to follow me, make sure and do it out there on X, at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.